I got it! When I first heard about Dave being trapped in a maze. One, two, three, four! I built a labyrinth. Can you believe it? Dave is trapped in a cardboard maze in his living room and he can't get out. Welcome to Dave Made a Minute, the podcast where a whole bunch of us are exploring the film Dave Made a Maze one minute at a time. The twist. Many of the participants have never seen the film. Some don't even know what film they're sampling. They get their minutes and they tackle them as they see fit. Here's your host from the Groundhog Day Project and Michael Myers Minute, Robert Black. Minute 8, we learn about Dave's tendency to take up new things and abandon them. Also, Dave hasn't eaten in a while. To tackle Minute 8, we have Chris Frayne and Rudy Thornburg of Open the Podcast Doors How. You come home, there's a giant maze in your living room. You're like, what the? There's a giant maze in my living room. I've heard of people rearranging the furniture, but this is wackadoodle crazy. You give me a sense of that. This doesn't make any sense. It's like a fucking cocktail party in here. Can I get a few words from you before you go? Hello and welcome to Open the Podcast Doors House. No, no, no. What? Doing the other thing. Okay, let's do the other thing. All right. So you're listening to minute eight of what we're calling whatever the heck this is. Yep. Minute. Yes. Uh, I am Chris Frame. I am Rudy Thornburg. And together we host another podcast called Open the Podcast Door is Hell. And that's a movie by minute podcast where we examine, we overanalyze, we obsess. We over, make jokes about. Of the minutia, if yep. you will, of Stanley Kubrick's 1968 science fiction masterpiece, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Yep. This isn't that. Nope. No, what we're doing is we're participating in this weird podcast experiment where we're watching a mo- one minute of a movie that we've never seen before, that the only context we have of this minute is the last minute that we watched, which was minute five. Are you saying that for the first minute we watched, we had no context? I, ha- I had a little bit of context mm. in that I remembered... A review I read of this movie, maybe in the AV Club. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember anything specifically from it. So I'm still coming to this relatively uninformed. Yeah. I didn't have any background on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we watched, uh, we didn't watch a consecutive minute. We didn't, this isn't the minute right after the no, first one, not r- right after the one we watched first. This is minute eight. This is minute eight. And this entire minute is the character Annie. And she is talking to this other character who we haven't seen before. Apparently they own the living room together. Because they say he's, on that. he's in a fort in our living room. I didn't even pick up on that. It so could be that all three of them are just roommates. It could be. It could be. They could be sharing. Especially, I mean, with the economy these days. In this economy? I mean. Yeah. In this housing market? Oof. Yeah. Um, so this is a character named Gordon. And I did a little research on Gordon. Gordo! He's played by the actor Adam Busch. B-U-S-C-H. German. Um, among his credits in IMDb are Altered Carbon, which is this hit show on Netflix right now. How did now. you know who he was? I, I cheated. I cheated. I still don't know what this movie is really about, though. I don't. I, you have to trust me on this. I mean, I don't think you're lying. I'm just saying we're having two different experiences now. Yeah, we're having two different experiences, one of which is, is only slightly more informed. You get I the mean, enhanced. Well, maybe mine's enhanced. I'm the context guy. I got to provide yeah. the context. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it was in on Altered Carbon, some episodes of NCIS. Uh, he was the auteur, the producer, director, writer, writer, and um, I believe music, mu- like the actual guy who wrote the score, for a movie called Drones from 2010, which I remember hearing about it, heard of it, haven't seen it. And among his IMDb credits, and this guy looks like he's a little younger me- than me, but not that much younger than me, um, 
Leon the Professional. Yeah, I remember that character from that movie, The Professional. Do you remember The Professional? Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, that was like 1992 or something. Yes. Yeah, so he was in this, like, he doesn't look like he'd be old enough. Was he a classmate of the girl? Of Natalie Portman? Yeah. Maybe that's it. Actually, right. that would work out perfectly. Okay. So we're going to guess that that's what he was Okay. in Leon the Professional. Anyways. There's only one Leon for me, and it's the guy with the turtle in the desert flipping it on his back. And uh, let me tell you about my mother. <laughs> that's Leon. Wrong show. Nope. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're having a discussion about Dave, and they're saying, well, he's been in there for three days in a fort. He's been trapped in a fort of his own making. And I realized in this minute, we do a movie where a guy named Dave pretends he's the president. No, a guy named Dave gets trapped in another dimension, gets trapped in a spoiler alert. If you haven't seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, go ahead and hit the uh, 15 second button uh, a few times. Woo! Um, he gets trapped in a hotel room a weird, surreal hotel room for the rest of his life. Um, or, or at least his life as a human being. So we're kind of doing the same movie here. This is sure. This is sort of, you know, Wes Anderson's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Someone please make that happen. Okay. I'm with you on that. I think that's... I that's think great. actually there is like on Vimeo, someone did a trailer. Or I might be thinking of Wes Anderson's Alien. <laughs> Which is, it, it, it's really good. No, I, someone must have done 2001. Anyways, uh, so they're saying, yeah, he's trapped in there He's for three days. And yeah, they of, did they're, say they're, stuck. They did say stuck, stuck or trapped. They're stuck yeah. in there. <clears throat> and um, they're talking about him as if he's not there. And, of course, he can hear them. He can hear them. Because she says, goes, oh, where does he go to the bathroom? Right. And he goes, he well, says, I've only been eating trail mix. I right. haven't eaten I haven't very much. I haven't had to poop yet. Yeah. He didn't even say that. For all we know, he did. Right. He just what's, says, I haven't eaten much. What's disturbing about that is is that's when you see steam coming out of the... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just, I, didn't, I didn't need to associate hot poo <laughs> with anything. In this minute, with anything. Yeah. Um, but the, the male is defending the bizarreness, right? No, no he's, he's not, not really defending. No, he's saying he's, it's even crappier. He's saying he made it, so it's even stupider right. than he, being trapped in there. But he's also saying he has all these different hobbies that he's tried out and not followed through right. on, so he's, which he's, is a childish thing to do. That's a, a developmentally appropriate thing for a child to do. You know, try out a million different hobbies and not follow through on many of them yeah Yeah. um but he was like but this is the one thing he did kind of stick to and follow through and has something has come of it you know i'm but he's still he's still saying it in a way that's supposed to come off as insulting i'm gonna slightly disagree with you i not about this movie but about the point that it's sort of childish behavior to to do that i actually encourage people to try and and including myself to try something new Every couple I, of years. I would not discourage anybody from... I'm doing it right now myself. I'm we just started podcasting yesterday. Yeah. And, and look at us now. Yeah. Yeah. We I'm, wouldn't have known that we would be good at this. And we still Unless don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, we tried different... I think that is a healthy thing to do, but it is discouraged in adulthood. I don't think that it's... That's why I'm saying it's childish. That's not me putting it down. That's me saying it's a thing reminiscent of childhood, and it is looked at as okay. childish. I, I, I misunderstood the I intention of your point. I just don't think I, I was giving, I was being entirely explicit about the connotations. Mm-hmm. I, I do think it's a thing perceived as childish. I don't think it's a bad trait. I think people should be exploring all the time. Yeah. Um, so we're picking up from this that, yeah, he's... I think that's part that of the appeal a, of this history, kind of movie. Is what? It appeals to a person who still wants that, the feeling of discovery and growth, yeah. which is like, no, you turned 30. Like, sign, you need to get you know, on board in a corporation so that you can right. have a good life, you know? Right. And so that stuff is discouraged. And I think people still want joy and wonder in their lives, which is why we enjoy movies like that. Rudy, I think you're coming around to liking this movie. Dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of the movie. 
Now you're thinking of Dead Calm. That's a great movie. It is a good movie. Was Randy Quaid in that? Dennis. No. Which one's the crazy one? Well, De- Randy. Which which one was in Inner Space? Randy. Dennis. It's Dennis. He's the one who like. Yeah, it's Dennis. Okay, Dennis Quaid was in Dead Calm. Dead Calm. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I think Randy Quaid's living the Dead, dead calm. calm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's all the notes I have for this minute. Um, we still don't have. I think we have a handle on the premise after only maybe watching two minutes of this. That there is a guy who's kind of a, a dilettante mm. who has a history of this that has annoyed his friends. And I can think of some people. My that. idiot brother. Yeah. What about him? He's immature. People look down on him, even though he's a good person. Yeah. That he's the one we're supposed yeah. to identify yeah. with. Yeah, you don't, you don't loathe this person. You're just kind of annoyed that... The opening scene where the cop's trying to buy weed from him, you know, and then he finally is like, oh, fine, all right, you know, and then he's like, you idiot. So, like, he's lambasted for trusting, you know, a child, you know, a childhood classmate or a friend or whatever. So I, I think we're back. We're, that's uh, yeah. you know a related theme. Um, so yeah, the premise is that I guess this guy is a uh, he's uh, yeah like a dilettante and he has built this fort. We don't know why this is the expression. This is the manifestation of whatever. And and there's obviously something bothering him. This guy, Dave. There, there really is something bothering him for, for him to do that. But he doesn't sound too stressed about it. He sounds like he's just going to hang out in this He's sport. caught up in his, you know, yeah. his escapism. He's, he's definitely, and, and no one is, no one's alarmed yet at this. I would think people would be alarmed if you were trapped in another dim- I would hope people would be. It sounds like he's not missing out dimension. like on going to work or something. It's not like he's getting fired from his job at Penetrode or whatever. I know that I can call in at my job. I can get my <laughs> wife to cover for me. He's trapped in another dimension. Yep. But gonna... I, I think what are we really talking about? This is it's surreal. This is fantasy. So yeah. it, when we're talking about people's reaction, it's not going to be like He's in his fort for three days straight. And if you know somebody is mentally unstable or going through a hard time, then yeah. there it is. That's all it is. Yeah. But if it's clear from listening and from what you see that there is something supernatural, like if you're seeing a, a 10 foot by 5 foot cardboard structure that sounds and behaves like it's a, you know, 2,000 square foot basement, something odd's happening. And that's the part that's disturbing. Right. I just rest assured I would if if this happened to you. Yep. I would call the authorities. Who's the authority? I, I don't <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, that's, that's it. That's what that's all I have for this minute. Um, Let's see if we can shoehorn Ghostbusters into the next one. Sure. Uh, we'll see you in about three months or so. I, I honestly don't know, yeah, how, we what, don't know what the release schedule on this is, but we're gonna do some minutes in the future. Oh plugs uh open the podcast doors hal that's our podcast it's about 2001 a space odyssey uh you can find us on twitter at 2001 podcast facebook open the podcast doors hal and instagram open the podcast doors hal thank you listeners and, group on facebook yeah it's called space station five that's a reference to 2001 a space odyssey it sure is and what else email us yeah Open the podcast doors out at gmail.com. <laughs> Woo! We're watch, all set. Yeah, watch Altered Carbon and uh, we'll watch s- Dead Calm. Yeah, watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And we will see you sometime in the, the future. future with whatever the heck this is, minute. <laughs> Goodbye.
It's Chris Frain and Rudy Thornburg have opened the podcast doors, Hal, taking on Minute 8 of Dave Made a Maze. They will be back in Minute 49. Next time on Dave Made a Minute, we've got me, Robert Black, for Michael Myers Minute, taking on Minute 9. Thank you for listening to Dave Made a Minute. Intro dialogue snippets were taken from Dave Made a Maze, directed by Bill Watterson, written by Bill Watterson and Steve Sears, and produced by John Charles Meyer. Intro music is Diversion by The Equals, featured in the film Dave Made a Maze, and Life Cycle of a Match by Parvis Decree. Outro music is Leaving This Godforsaken Place and Her Presence is Strong Here by Parvis Decree. Dave Made a Minute is a production of Lemming Drop Studio and all other featured podcast producers. You can find more content at lemmingdrops.com. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Dave Made a Minute. If you like what you hear, throw us a rating and review on your podcatcher of choice. And check out all of the participants' other shows to spread the love around. Again, thank you for listening. As long as we're all working together, it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. I need you to notify the families of everyone who died here today. Totally. Wait, what?